Recently, Microsoft shared further details about its upcoming Xbox Series X console. The most exciting takeaway was our first glimpse at performance figures for the 9th gen consoles. Sweeping aside the leaks, Microsoft announced that the Xbox Series X would feature a 12 teflop graphics processing unit based on the RDNA 2 architecture. This is the most explicit information we've received from the console makers till date about the graphics capabilities of the next-gen consoles. Exactly how fast is the Xbox Series X relative to existing PC hardware, and what is it capable of delivering? Well, these are now questions that we can offer meaningful answers to. Where does the Xbox Series X stand relative to PC hardware? The Xbox Series X will offer a tremendous improvement in performance over the 8th gen consoles and their mid-cycle refresh counterparts. This isn't up for debate. What is, though, is exactly how powerful the Series X will be relative to existing PC hardware. Since the release of the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One back in 2013, PC hardware has grown in capabilities by leaps and bounds. Even in terms of raw compute, which isn't a reliable metric since modern architecture delivers more gaming performance per teraflop of compute, today's flagship graphics cards like the RTX 2080 Ti are over 10 times as powerful as the base 8th gen consoles. This sets very high standards for the Xbox Series X. An iterative improvement over the Xbox One X would be meaningless at this point. So exactly what does 12 teflops mean in this context? In comparison to existing AMD hardware, this would put the Xbox Series X's compute performance more or less on par with the 12.5 teflop Vega 64. It would also mean that the console delivers twice the graphics horsepower of the Xbox One X. This, however, is a rare case where the truth is likely better than the marketing hype. The Xbox Series X almost certainly delivers more than two times the gaming performance of the Xbox One X. So how is this possible? It has to do with the RDNA 2 architecture and gaming-specific optimizations relative to GCN. AMD's GCN architecture has been one of the longest-lived paradigms in the history of graphics hardware. GCN 1.0 debuted in 2011 with the Radeon HD 7970. Subsequent iterations of GCN didn't change much. Newer cards like the R9 Fury series and AMD's Polaris lineup changed other aspects, the memory configuration and clock speeds respectively in those two cases. Clock for clock, with other factors like memory bandwidth remaining the same, GCN 4.0 delivers less than 10% greater performance than GCN 1.0. IPC improvements were incremental at best across the lifespan of GCN. RDNA 1.0 introduced a plethora of gaming-oriented optimizations, including a narrower Wave 32 instruction set, ensuring optimal utilization of shader resources, a retooled cache and memory hierarchy, and more. We have fewer details available about RDNA 2.0 improvements, but IPC improvements are likely to be non-negligible. RDNA 1.0 was itself a massive improvement. The 7.9 Teflop RX 5700 delivered better performance than the 12.4 Teflop RX Vega 64. What does this mean for the Xbox Series X's GPU? Well, these numbers are almost certain to hold true with the Series X's RDNA-based GPU. It would indicate that in terms of actual gaming performance, the Xbox Series X will deliver between 3 and 4 times more power than the Xbox One X does right now. Barring CPU limitations, this means that anything the Xbox One X can run at 4K, the Xbox Series X can deliver at a locked 60fps. Relative to the PC market, it also means that the Xbox Series X can stand on its own against the very best cards out there. At present, there is no single AMD card that offers gaming performance on par with the Xbox Series X's GPU. The closest we get is the RX 5700 XT, which delivers about 80% of the Series X's graphics power. Moving over to NVIDIA hardware, the Xbox Series X's GPU is faster than the RTX 2070 Super and stands as a midpoint, somewhere between the RTX 2080 Super and the RTX 2080 Ti. This has significant implications all around in terms of gaming prowess, cost, and the Xbox Series X's lifespan. What does 12 teflops mean in terms of the Xbox Series X's gaming capabilities? With a 12 teflop RDNA 2 GPU, it's now evident that Microsoft wasn't kidding around when it discussed 120Hz and 8K gaming. The Xbox Series X's GPU is more than capable of delivering 4K 60Hz experiences in today's graphically intensive AAA titles, but it also has the headroom to go well beyond. Many people questioned whether or not the in-engine footage for Hellblade 2 Sinuous Saga was actually indicative of 9th gen gaming visuals. 
Polygon counts, especially on incidental details, were far in excess of anything we've seen this generation. Moreover, draw distances stretched out so far that pop-in was almost non-existent. If the Xbox Series X features a 12 teflop RDNA 2 GPU though, this level of visual quality is well within reach, especially if we're talking about a 4K 30fps experience. RDNA features a very high fill rate, relative to GCN. This means less of a performance hit when handling scenes with extremely detailed character and environmental models, as seen in the Hellblade 2 demo. The Xbox Series X's 12 teflop GPU, together with its relatively powerful Zen 2 processor, will make it likely that 4K 60fps is the 9th gen's performance and image quality baseline. Unlike the 8th generation consoles, an adequate level of CPU performance means that the Xbox Series X will likely be able to scale a performance to higher GPU utilization limits. We won't with 4K 30 experiences simply because of a lack of CPU horsepower. A faster CPU also means that 120Hz experiences are a possibility, especially at lower resolutions. 1440 and 1080p 120fps experiences will transform esports on the Xbox Series X. Popular esports titles will deliver performance and latency parity with PC. Support for keyboard and mouse will mean genuine, compromise-free esports experiences on console. What does 12 teflops mean in terms of the Xbox Series X's pricing? Everything we've seen so far points to the Xbox Series X being a premium, gaming-oriented console. From the large, boxy form factor, to the high-end gameplay showcases, to a GPU that's faster than anything AMD has on the market at the moment. Unfortunately, what this means is the Xbox Series X will almost certainly be a premium product in terms of pricing as well. The RX 5700 XT, a flagship AMD graphics card, delivers 20% less performance than the Xbox Series X's GPU, yet its sticker price is $399. Even factoring in economies of scale and manufacturer discounts, it's hard to see Microsoft's bill of materials for the graphics unit alone come to less than $200 or $250, if not more. Throw in next-generation NVMe SSD and an 8-core Zen 2 CPU that's more or less on par with the $329 Ryzen 7 3700X, and it's hard to see Microsoft pricing the Xbox Series X anywhere less than $599. Even at that price point, Microsoft will likely make a significant loss per unit. This makes rumors about a possible entry-level Lockhart offering seem realistic. Microsoft could claim performance dominance this generation with the Xbox Series X, while offering Lockhart to the mass market audiences at a more palatable price point. Whether that strategy ends up working or not, or if people will simply opt for the PlayStation 5, is really anybody's guess at this point. Conclusion Microsoft really threw the gauntlet down when it revealed that the Xbox Series X would be featuring a 12 teflop GPU. It sets expectations for 9th gen visual capabilities sky high. It also challenges Sony to share more details about the PlayStation 5 early on to avoid growing suspicion that the console might not deliver on the performance front. In any case, we're likely to hear more from both console makers in the months to come. E3 2020 is looking more exciting by the day. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.